Act One of The Devil is an Ass by Ben Johnson. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dramatis Personae Satan, the Great Devil. Read by Alan Mapstone. Pug, the Less Devil. Read by Sonia. Iniquity, the Vice, read by Nemo. Fabian Fitzdotro, a squire of Norfolk, read by Thomas Peter. Meercraft, the Projector, read by Hamlet. Everall, his champion, read by Algy Pug. Whittapole, a young gallant, read by Todd. Eustace Manley, his friend. Read by Chuck Williamson. Engine, a broker. Read by Rob Board. Trains, the projector's man. Read by Jason in Panama. Thomas Gilted, a goldsmith. Read by Caleb Toll. Plutarchus, his son. Read by Eva Davis. Sir Paul Iverside, a lawyer and justice. Read by Beth Thomas. Ambler, gentle usher to Lady Tailbush, read by Kurt. Sledge, a smith, the constable, read by Joseph Tabler. Shackles, keeper of Newgate, read by Bruce Kachuk. Mrs. Frances Fitzdotro, read by Sandra Schmidt. Lady Oithersword, read by Lian Yao. Lady Tailbush, the Lady Projectress. Read by Linda Olsen Feitak. Pitfall, her woman. Read by Abai. Sergeant, read by Roger Moline. Keeper one, read by Victor Vizarraza. Keeper two, read by Adriana Sassioto. Keeper three, read by T. J. Burns. Keeper four, read by Owen Cook. Stage Directions, read by Sawasawaya. Stage Directions, read by Elizabeth Martinson. Scene, London. Prologue. The Devil is an Ass. That is today the name of what you are met for, a new play. Yet, grandees, would you were not come to grace our matter with allowing us no place? though you presume satan a subtle thing and may have heard he's worn in a thumb ring do not on these presumptions force us act in compass of a cheese trencher this tract will ne'er admit our vice because of yours anon who worse than you the fault endures that yourselves make when you will thrust and spurn and knock us on the elbows and bid turn as if when we had spoke we must be gone or till we speak must all run in to one like the young adders at the old one's mouth would we could stand due north or had no south if that offend or were muscovy glass that you might look our scenes through as they pass we know not how to affect you if you'll come to see new plays pray you afford us room and show this but the same face you have done your dear delight the devil of edmonton or if for want of room it must miscarry twill be but justice that your censure tarry till you give some and when six times you have seen it if this play do not like the devil is in it act one scene one enter satan and pug ho 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 to earth and why to earth thou foolish spirit what wouldst thou do on earth for that great chief as time shall work i do but ask my month which every petty puny devil has within that term 
the court of hell will hear something may gain a longer grant perhaps or oh, what the laming of a poor cow or two entering a sow to make her cast her farrow or crossing of a market woman's mare twixt this and tottenham these were wont to be your main achievements pug you have some plot now upon a tunning of ale to stale the yeast or keep the churn so that the butter come not spite of the housewife's cord or her hot spit or some good rebibe about kentish town or hogston you would now hang for a witch because she will not let you play round robin and you'll go sour the citizen's cream gainst sunday that she may be accused for it and condemned by a middlesex jury to the satisfaction of their offended friends the londoners wives whose teeth were set on edge with it foolish fiend stay in your place know your own strength and put not beyond the sphere of your activity you are too dull a devil to be trusted forth in those parts pug upon any affair that may concern our name on earth it is not every one's work the state of hell must care whom it employs in point of reputation here about london you would make i think an agent to be sent for lancashire proper enough or some part of northumberland's so you had good instructions pug oh chief you do not know dear chief what there is in me prove me but for a fortnight for a week and lend me but a vice to carry with me to practise there with any playfellow and you will see there will come more upon it than you'll imagine precious chief what vice what kind wouldst thou have it of why any fraud or covetousness or lady vanity or old iniquity i'll call him hither enter iniquity what is he calls upon me and would seem to lack a vice ere his words be half spoken i am with him in a trice here there and everywhere as the cat is with the mice true vetus iniquitous lacks thou cards friend or dice i will teach thee to cheat child to cog lie and swagger and ever and anon to be drawing forth thy dagger to swear by gog's knowns like a lusty juventus in a cloak to thy heel and a hat like a penthouse thy breeches of three fingers and thy doublet all belly with a wench that shall feed thee with cockstones and jelly is it not excellent chief how nimble he is child of hell this is nothing i will fetch thee a leap from the top of paul's steeple to the standard in cheap and lead thee a dance through the streets without fail like a needle of spain with a thread at my tail we will survey the suburbs and make forth our sallies down petticoat lane and up the smock alleys to shoreditch whitechapel and so to st catherine's to drink with a the dutch there and take forth their patterns from thence we will put in at custom house key there and see how the factors and prentices play there false with their masters and geld many a full pack to spend it in pies at the dagger and the woolsack brave brave iniquity will not do this chief nay boy i will bring thee to the bods and the royster's at billingsgate feasting with claret wine and oysters from thence shoot the bridge child to the cranes and the vintry and see there the gimblets how they make their entry or if thou hadst rather to the strand down to fall gainst the lawyers come dabbled from westminster hall and mark how they cling with their clients together like ivy to oak so velvet to leather ha boy i would show thee rare rare 
peace dotard and thou more ignorant thing that so admirest art thou the spirit thou seemst so poor to choose this for a vice to advance the cause of hell now as vice stands in its present year remember what number it is six hundred and sixteen had it but been five hundred though some sixty above that's fifty years agone and six when every great man had his voice stand by him in his long coat shaking his wooden dagger i could consent that then this your grave choice might have done that with his lord chief the which most of his chamber can do now but pug as times are who is it will receive you what company will you go to or who mix with where canst thou carry him except to taverns to mount upon a joint stool with a jew's trump to put down coakley and that must be to citizens he ne'er will be admitted there where venner comes he may perchance in tale of a sheriff's dinner skip with a rhyme on the table from new nothing and take his almain leap into a custard shall make the lady mayress and her sisters laugh all their hoods over their shoulders but this is not that will do they are other things that are received now upon earth for vices stranger and newer and changed every hour they ride them like their horses off their legs and here they come to hell whole legions of them every week tired we still strive to breed and rear up new ones but they do not stand when they come there they turn them on our hands and it is feared they have a stud of their own will put down ours both our breed and trade will suddenly decay if we prevent not unless it be a vice of quality or fashion now they take none from us carmen are got into the yellow starch and chimney sweepers to their tobacco and strong waters hum meath and o'barney we must therefore aim at extraordinary subtle ones now when we do send to keep us up in credit not old iniquities get you e'en back sir to making your rope of sand again you are not for the manner nor the times they have their vices there most like to virtues you cannot know them apart by any difference they wear the same clothes eat the same meat sleep in the self-same beds ride in those coaches or very like four horses in a coach as the best men and women tissue gowns garters and roses fourscore pound a pair embroidered stockings cut-work smocks and shirts more certain marks of lechery now and pride than e'er they were of true nobility exit iniquity but pug since you do burn with such desire to do the commonwealth of hell some service i am content assuming of a body you go to earth and visit men a day but you must take a body ready made pug i can create you none nor shall you form yourself an airy one but become subject to all impression of the flesh you take so far as human frailty so this morning there is a handsome cut purse hanged at tyburn whose spirit departed you may enter his body for clothes employ your credit with the hangman or let our tribe of brokers furnish you and look how far your subtlety can work through those organs with that body spy amongst mankind you cannot there want vices 
and therefore the less need to carry them with you. But as you make your soon at night's relation, and we shall find it merits from the state, you shall have both trust from us and employment. Oh, most gracious chief! Only thus more I bind you, to serve the first man that you meet. And him I'll show you now. Observe him, yon is he. Shows him Fitzdotterel coming out of his house at a distance. You shall see first after your clothing. Follow him, but once engaged, there you must stay and fix. Not shift until the midnight's cock do crow. Any conditions to be gone. Away then. Exeunt severally. Scene two. The street before Fitzdotterel's house. Enter Fitzdotterel. Aye, they do now name Brentnor as before they talked of Gresham and of Dr. Foreman, Franklin and Fisk and Savory. He was in two. But there's not one of these that ever could yet show a man the devil in true sort. They have their crystals, I do know, and rings, and virgin parchment, and the dead men's skulls, their raven's wings their lights and pentacles with characters i have seen all these but oh would i might see the devil i would give a hundred of these pictures to see him once out of picture may i prove a cuckold and that's the one main mortal thing i fear if i begin not now to think that painters have only made him Slight he would be seen one time or other else. He would not let an ancient gentleman of as good a house as most are now in England, the Fitzdotterels, run wild and call upon him thus in vain, as I have done this twelvemonth. If he be not at all, why are there conjurers? If they be not, why are there laws against them? The best artists of Cambridge, Oxford, Middlesex, and London, Essex and Kent, I have had in pay to raise him these fifty weeks, and yet he appears not. It's death, I shall suspect they can make circles only shortly, and know but his hard names. They do say he will meet a man of himself that has a mind to him. If he would so, I have a mind and a half for him. He should not be long absent. Prithee, come, I long for thee, and I were with child by him, and my wife too, I could not more. Come yet, good Beelzebub, were he a kind devil, and had humanity in him, he would come, but to save one's longing. I should use him well, I swear it with respect. Would he would try me? Not if the conjurers do when they have raised him, get him in bonds, and send him post on errands a thousand miles. It is preposterous, that, and I believe it's the true cause he comes not, and he has reason. Who would be engaged that might live freely as he may do? I swear they are wrong all. The burnt child dreads the fire. They do not know to entertain the devil. I would so welcome him. Observe his diet. Get him his chamber hung with arras, two of them, in my own house. Lend him my wife's wrought pillows. And as I am an honest man, I think, if he had a mind to her, too, uh, I should grant him to make our friendship perfect. So I would not to every man. If he but hear me now, and should come to me in a brave young shape, and take me at my word. Enter Pug, handsomely shaped and apparelled. Ha! Who is this? Sir, your good pardon that I thus presume upon your privacy. I am born a gentleman, a younger brother, but in some disgrace now with my friends, and want some little means to keep me upright while things be reconciled. Please you to let my service be of use to you, sir. Fitzdotterel aside service the hell my heart was at my mouth 
till I had viewed his shoes well, that those roses were big enough to hide a cloven foot. No, my friend, my number's full. I have one servant, who is my all, indeed, and from the broom unto the brush, but just so far I trust him. He is my wardrobe man, my caterer, cook, butler, and steward, looks unto my horse, and helps to watch my wife. He has all the places that I can think on, from the garret downward, even to the manger, and the curry-comb. Sir, I shall put your worship to no charge, more than my meat, and that but very little. I'll serve you for your love. Oh, without wages? <gasps> Oh, I'd hearken up that year were I at leisure, but now I am busy. Prithee, friend, forbear me, and thou hast been a devil. I should say somewhat more to thee. Thou dost hinder now my meditations. Sir, I am a devil. How? A true devil, sir. Nay, now you lie. Under your favour, friend, for I'll not quarrel. I looked on your feet afore. You cannot cozen me. Your shoe's not cloven, sir. You are whole hoofed. Sir, that's a popular error. Deceives many. But I am that I tell you. What's your name? My name is Devil, sir. Sayest thou true? Indeed, sir. Sled, there's some omen in this. What countryman? Of Derbyshire, sir, about the peak. That hall belonged to your ancestors? Yes, the devil's arse, sir. Fitzdotterel, aside. I'll entertain him for the namesake, <laughs> and turn away my t'other man, and save four pound a year by that. There is luck and thrift, too. The very devil may come hereafter as well. A friend, I receive you, but withal, I acquaint you half a hand. If you offend me, I must beat you. It is a kind of exercise I use, and cannot be without. Yes, if I do not offend, you can, sure. Faith, devil, very hardly. I'll call you by your surname, because I love it. Enter behind, engine with a cloak on his arm, Whittapole and Manley. Yonder he walks, sir. I'll go lift him for you. To him, good engine. Raise him up by degrees, gently, and hold him there, too. You can do it. Show yourself now a mathematical broker. I'll warrant you for half a piece. Tis done, sir. Engine goes to Fitzdotterel and takes him aside. Is it possible there should be such a man? You shall be your own witness. I'll not labor to tempt you past your faith. And is his wife so very handsome, say you? I have not seen her since I came home from travel. And they say she is not altered. Then, before I went, I saw her once. But so, as she hath struck still in my view, no object hath removed her. Tis a fair guest, friend, beauty. And once lodged deep in the eyes... She hardly leaves the inn. How does he keep her? Very brave. However himself sordid, he is sensual that way. In every dressing he does study her. And furnish forth himself so from the brokers? Yes, that's a hired suit he now has on to see the devil is an ass today in. This engine gets three or four pound a week by him. He dares not miss a new play or a feast what rate soever clothes be at, and thinks himself still new, in other men's old. But stay, does he love meat so? Faith, he does not hate it, but that's not it. His belly and his palate would be compounded with for reason. Mary, a wit he has, of that strange credit with him, gainst all mankind. And as it doth make him do just what it list, it ravishes him forth whither to please, to any assembly or place, and would conclude him ruined should he escape one public meeting out of the belief he has of his own great and catholic strengths in arguing and discourse. It takes, I see, he has got the cloak upon him. 
Fitzdotterel, after saying on the cloak, A fair garment, by my faith, engine. It was never made, sir, for threescore pound, I assure you. Twill yield thirty. The plush, sir, cost three pound ten shillings a yard, and then the lace and velvet. I shall, engine, be looked at prettily in it. Art thou sure the play is played to-day? Oh, here's the bill, sir. I'd forgotten to give it you. He gives him the play-bill. Ha, ha, the devil! I will not lose you, Sarah. But, engine, think you the gallant is so furious in his folly, so mad upon the matter, that he'll part with his cloak upon these terms? Trust not your engine. Break me to pieces, else as you would do a rotten crane or an old rusty jack that has not one true wheel in him. Do but talk with him. I shall do that to satisfy you, engine, and myself too. Comes forward. With your leave, gentlemen, which of you is it? Is so mere idolater to my wife's beauty, and so very prodigal unto my patience, that for the short parley of one swift hour's quarter with my wife he will depart with oh, let me see this cloak here the price of folly sir are you the man i am the adventurer sir good time your name is whittipool the same sir and tis told me you have travelled lately that i have sir truly your travels may have altered your complexion, but sure your wit stood still. It may well be, sir. All heads have not like growth. The good man's gravity that left you land, your father, never taught you these pleasant matches. No, nor can his mirth, with whom I make them, put me off. You are resolved, then? Yes, sir. Beauty is the saint. You'll sacrifice yourself into the shirt, too? so I may still clothe and keep warm your wisdom. You laid me, sir. I know what you will bear, sir. Well, to the point. Tis only, sir, you say, to speak unto my wife? Only to speak to her. And in my presence? In your very presence. And in my hearing? In your hearing, so you interrupt us not. For the short space you do demand, the fourth part of an hour, I think I shall with some convenient study, and this good help to boot. Shrugs himself up in the cloak. Bring myself to it. I ask no more. Please you, walk toward my house, and speak what you list. That time is yours. My right I have departed with, but not beyond a minute or a second look for. Length and drawing out may advance much to these matches, and I accept all kissing. Kisses our silent petition still with willing lovers. Lovers! How false that are your fantasy! Sir, I do know somewhat. I forbid all lip-work. I am not eager at forbidden dainties. Who covets unfit things denies himself. You say well, sir. It was prettily said, that same. He does indeed. I have no touches, therefore, nor takings by the arms, nor tender circles cast about the waist but all be done at distance love is brought up with those soft mignard handlings his pulse lies in his palm and i defend all melting joints and fingers that's my bargain i do defend them anything like action but talk sir what you will use all the tropes and schemes that prince quintilian can afford you and much good do your rhetoric's heart you are welcome, sir. Opens the door of his house. Engine, God be with you. Sir, I must condition to have this gentleman by, a witness. Well, I am content, so he be silent. Yes, sir. Come, devil, I'll make you room straight, but I'll show you first to your mistress, who's no common one, you must conceive, that brings his gain to see her. I hope thou hast brought me good luck. I shall do it, sir. They all enter the house. Scene three. A room in Fitzdotterel's house. Enter Whittapole, Manly, and Engine. Engine? 
you hope of your half-piece tis there sir be gone exit engine friend manly who's within here fixed knocks him on the breast i am directly in a fit of wonder what will be the issue of this conference for that ne'er vex yourself till the event how like you him i would fain see more of him what think you of this i am past degrees of thinking old afric and the new america with all their fruit of monsters cannot show so just a prodigy could you have believed without your sight a mind so sordid inward should be so spacious and laid forth abroad with all the show that ever shop or ware was i believe anything now though i confess his vices are the most extremities i ever knew in nature but why loves he the devil so oh sir for hidden treasure he hopes to find and has proposed himself so infinite a mass as to recover he cares not what he parts with of the present to his men of art who are the race may coin him promise gold mountains and the covetous are still most prodigal but have you faith that he will hold his bargain oh dear sir he will not off on fear him not i know him one baseness still accompanies another see he is here already and his wife too a wondrous handsome creature as i live enter fitzdottrell with mrs francis his wife come wife this is the gentleman oh, nay blush not why what do you mean sir have you your reason wife i do not know that i have lent it forth to any one at least without a pawn wife that i have ate or drunk the thing of late that should corrupt it wherefore gentle wife obey it is thy virtue hold no acts of disputation are you not enough to talk of feasts and meetings but you'll still make argument for fresh why careful wedlock if i have a long to have one tale more go of me what is that to thee dear heart why shouldst thou envy my delight or cross it by being solicitous when it not concerns thee yes i have share in this the scorn will fall as bitterly on me where both are laughed at laughed at sweet bird is that the scruple come come thou art a nice which of your great houses i will not mean at home here but abroad your family's in france wife send not forth something within the seven year may be laughed at i do not say seven months nor seven weeks nor seven days nor hours but seven year wife i give them time once within seven year i think they may do something may be laughed at in france i keep me there still wherefore wife let them that list laugh still rather than weep for me here is a cloak cost fifty pound wife which i can sell for thirty when i have seen all london in it and london has seen me to-day i go to the blackfriars playhouse sit in the view salute all my acquaintance rise up between the acts let fall my cloak publish a handsome man and a rich suit as that's a special end why we go thither all that pretend to stand for it on the stage the ladies ask who's that for they do come to see us love as we do to see them now i shall lose all this for the false fear of being laughed at yes wuss. let them laugh why let me have such another cloak to-morrow and let them laugh again wife and again and then grow fat with laughing and then fatter all my young gallants let em bring their friends too shall i forbid them no let heaven forbid them or wit if it have any chart on him come thy ear wife is all i'll borrow of thee set your watch sir thou only art to hear not speak a word dove to aught he says that i do give you in precept no less than counsel on your wifehood wife not though he flatter you or make court or love as you must look for these or say he rail whatever his arts be wife i will have thee delude them with a trick thy obstinate silence i know advantages and i love to hit these pragmatic young men at their own weapons is your watch ready here my sail bears for you tag toward him sweet pinnace he disposes his wife to her place 
Where's your watch? I'll set it, sir, with yours. Mrs. Fitzdottrell aside. I must obey. Her modesty seems to suffer with her beauty, and so if his folly were away, it were worth pity. Now they are right. Begin, sir. Uh, but, but first, let me repeat the contract briefly. I am, sir, to enjoy this cloak I stand in, freely, and as your gift, upon condition you may freely speak here to my spouse, your quarter of an hour always keeping in the measured distance of your yard or more from my said spouse, and in my sight and hearing. This is your covenant? Yes, but you'll allow for this time spent now? Set them so much back. I think I shall not need it. Well, begin, sir. There is your bound, sir. Not beyond that rush. If you interrupt me, sir, I shall discloak you. The time I have purchased, lady, is but short, and therefore, if I employ it thriftily, I hope I stand the nearer to my pardon. I am not here to tell you you are fair, or lovely, or how well you dress you, lady. I'll save myself that eloquence of your glass, which can speak these things better to you than I. And tis a knowledge wherein fools may be as wise as a court parliament. Nor come I with any prejudice or doubt that you should, to the notice of your own worth, need least revelation. She's a simple woman, knows not her good, whoever knows her ill, and at all corrects. That you are the wife to so much blasted flesh, as scarce hath soul instead of salt to keep it sweet, I think will ask no witnesses to prove. The cold sheets that you lie in, with the watching candle that sees, how dull to any thaw of beauty, pieces and quarters, half and whole night sometimes, the devil-given elfin squire, your husband, doth leave you, quitting here his proper circle, for a much worse, in the walks of Lincoln's Inn under the elms, to expect the fiend in vain there will confess for you. I did look for this jeer. And what a daughter of darkness he does make you, locked up from all society or object. Your eye not let to look upon a face under a conjurer's, or some mould for one hollow and lean like his, but by great means as I now make. Your own too sensible sufferings without the extraordinary aids of spells or spirits may assure you, lady. For my part, I protest against all such practice. I work by no false arts, medicines, or charms to be said forward and backward. No, I accept. Sir, I shall ease you. He offers to discloak him. Mum. Nor have I ends, lady, upon you, more than this, to tell you how love, beauty's good angel, he that waits upon her at all occasions, and, no less than fortune, helps the adventurous, in me makes that proffer, which never fair one was so fond to lose, who would but reach a hand forth to her freedom. On the first sight I loved you, since which time, though I have travelled, I have been in travail more for the second blessing of your eyes, which now I've purchased, than for all aims else. Think of it, lady. Be your mind as active as is your beauty. View your object well. Examine both my fashion and my years. Things that are like are soon familiar, and nature joys still in equality. Let not the sign of the husband fright you, lady, but ere your spring be gone, enjoy it. Flowers, though fair, are oft but of one morning. Think, all beauty doth not last until the autumn. You grow old while I tell you this, and such as cannot use the present are not wise. If love and fortune will take care of us, why should our will be wanting? This is all. What do you answer, lady? Now the sport comes. Let him still wait, 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 while the watch goes and the time runs, wife. How? Not any word? Nay, then I taste a trick in it. Worthy lady, I cannot be so false to my own thoughts of your presumed goodness, to conceive this as your rudeness which I see imposed. Yet, since your catalyst jailer here stands by you, and you are denied the liberty of the house, let me take warrant, lady, from your silence, whichever is interpreted consent, to make your answer for you, which shall be to as good purpose as I can imagine, and what I think you'd speak. No, 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 no. I shall resume, sir. 
Sir, what do you mean? One interruption more, sir, and you go into your hose and doublet. Nothing saves you. And therefore hearken. This is for your wife. You must play fair, sir. Stand for me, good friend. Sets manly in his place and speaks for the lady. Troth, sir, tis more than true that you have uttered of my unequal and so sordid match here, with all the circumstances of my bondage. I have a husband, and a two-legged one, but such a moonling, as no wit of man or roses can redeem from being an ass. He has grown too much the story of men's mouths to scrape his lading. Should I make to my study and lay all ways, yea, call mankind to help to take his burden off? Why, this one act of his, to let his wife out to be courted, and at a price, proclaims his asinine nature so loud, as I am weary of my title to him. But, sir, you seem a gentleman of virtue, no less than blood, and one that every way looks as if he were of too good quality to entrap a credulous woman, or betray her. Since you have paid thus dear, sir, for a visit, and made such venture on your wit and charge, merely to see me, or at most to speak to me, I were too stupid, or what's worse, ingrate, not to return your venture. Think but how I may with safety do it, I shall trust my love and honour to you, and presume you'll ever husband both against this husband, who, if we chance to change his liberal ears to other ensigns, and with labour make a new beast of him, as he shall deserve, cannot complain, he is unkindly dealt with. This day he is to go to a new place, sir, from whence no fear, no, no authority, scarcely the king's command, sir, will restrain him. Now you have fitted him with a stage garment, for the mere name's sake were there nothing else, and many more such journeys he will make, which, if they now or any time thereafter offer us opportunity, you hear, sir, who'll be as glad and forward to embrace, meet, and enjoy it cheerfully, as you. Shifts to his own place again. I humbly thank you, lady. Keep your ground, sir. Will you be lightened? Mum. And but I am, by the said contract, thus to take my leave of you at this so envious distance, I had taught our lips ere this, to seal the happy mixture made of our souls. But we must both now yield to the necessity. Do not think yet, lady, but I can kiss and touch and laugh and whisper and do those crowning courtships too, for which day and the public have allowed no name. But now my bargain binds me. T'were rude injury to importune more, or urge a noble nature to what of its own bounty it is prone to. Else I should speak. But, lady, I love so well, as I will hope you'll do so too. I have done, sir. Well, then I have won. Sir, and I may win too. Oh, yes, no doubt on't. I'll take careful order that she shall hang forth ensigns at the window to tell you when I am absent. I'll keep three or four footmen ready still of purpose to run and fetch you at her longings, sir. I'll go bespeak me straight a gilt carrock for her and you to take the errand. Yes, into Hyde Park and thence into Blackfriars. This is the painter's where you may see pictures and note the properest limbs and how to make them. Or what do you say unto a middling gossip? to bring you I together at her lodging, under pretext of teaching of my wife some rare receipt of drawing almond milk, ha? Huh? It shall be a part of my care. Good sir, God be with you. I have kept the contract, and the cloak's mine own. Why, much good do it you, sir. It may fall out that you have bought it dear, though I've not sold it. Exit. A pretty riddle. Fare you well, good sir. Wife? Your face this way. Look on me, and think you had a wicked dream, wife, and forget it. This is the strangest motion I ever saw. Exit. Now, wife, since this fair cloak the worse upon me for my great sufferings, or your little patience, sir, huh? they laugh, you think? Why, sir, and you might see it. What thought they have of you may be soon collected by the young gentleman's speech. Young gentleman! Death, you are in love with him, are you? Could he not be named the gentleman without the young? 
up to your cabin again my cage you were best to call it yes sing there you'd fain be making blancmange with him at your mother's i know you go get you up exit mrs fitzdottrell enter pug how now what say you devil here is one engine sir desires to speak with you i thought he had brought some news of a broker well let him come in good devil fetch him else exit pug re-enter engine hello my fine engine what's the affair more cheats no sir the wit the brain the great projector i told you of is newly come to town where engine i have brought him he's without here he pulled off his boots sir but so followed for businesses but what is a projector i would conceive why one sir that projects ways to enrich men or to make them great by suits by marriages by undertakings according as he sees they humour it can he not conjure at all i think he can sir to tell you true but you do know of late the state hath taken such note of em and compelled em to enter such great bonds they dare not practise it is true and i lie fallow for the while oh sir you'll grow the richer for the rest oh, i hope i shall but engine you do talk somewhat too much of my courses my clerk customer could tell me strange particulars by my means how should he have them else you do not know sir what he has em by what arts a moneyed man sir and is as great with your almanac men as you are that gallant you make the other wait too long here and he is extreme punctual is he a gallant sir you shall see he's in his riding suit as he comes now from court but hear him speak minister matter to him and then tell me exeunt end of act one act two of the devil is an ass by ben jonson this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org act two scene one a room in fitzdottrell's house enter fitzdottrell engine and meercraft followed by trains with a bag and three or four attendants sir money is a whore a bawd a drudge fit to run out on errands let her go via pecunia when she's run and gone and fled and dead then will i fetch her again with aqua vitae out of an old hogshead while there are lees of wine or dregs of beer i'll never want her coin her out of cobwebs dust but i'll have her raise wool upon eggshells sir and make grass grow out of marrow-bones to make her come to first attendant commend me to your mistress say let the thousand pound but be head ready and it is done exit first attendant i would but see the creature of flesh and blood the man the prince indeed that could employ so many millions as i would help him to how talks he millions meercraft to second attendant i'll give you an account of this to-morrow exit second attendant yes i will take no less and do it too if they were myriads and without the devil by direct means it shall be good in law sir meercraft to third attendant tell master woodcock i'll not fail to meet him upon the exchange at night pray him to have the writings there and will dispatch it exit third attendant sir you are a gentleman of a good presence a handsome man i have considered you as a fit stock to graft honours upon i have a project to make you a duke now 
that you must be one within so many months as i set down out of true reasons of state you shall not avoid it but you must hearken then hearken why sir do you doubt his ears alas you do not know master fitz dottrell it does not know me indeed i thank you engine for rectifying him good why engine then i'll tell it you i see you have credit here and that you can keep counsel i'll not question he shall but be an undertaker with me in a most feasible business it shall cost him nothing good sir except he pleave but countenance that i will have to appear in to great men for which i'll make him one he shall not draw a string of purse i'll drive his patent for him we'll take in citizens commoners and aldermen to bear the charge and blow them off again like so many dead flies when it is carried the thing is for recovery of drowned land whereof the crown's to have a moiety if it be owner else the crown and owners to share that moiety and the recoverers to enjoy t'other moiety for their charge throughout england yes which will arrive to eighteen millions seven the first year i have computed all and made my survey unto my acre i'll begin at the pan not at the skirts as some have done and lost all that they wrought their timber-work their trench their banks all borne away or else filled up by the next winter tut they never want the way i'll have it all a gallant tract o land it is twill yield a pound an acre we must let cheap ever at first but sir this looks too large for you i see come hither we'll have a less here's a plain fellow points to trains you see him has his black bag of papers there in buckram will not be sold for the earldom of pancridge draw give me out one by chance trains gives him a paper out of the bag project for dog skins twelve thousand pound the very worst at first pray you let's see it sir tis a toy a trifle trifle twelve thousand pound for dog skins yes but by my way of dressing you must know sir and medicining the leather to a height of improved wear like your borraccio of spain sir i can fetch nine thousand for it of the king's glover yes how heard you that sir i do know you can within this hour and reserve half my secret pluck another see if thou hast a happier hand trains draws out another i thought so the very next worst to it bottle ale yet this is two and twenty thousand prithee pull out another two or three good stay friend by bottle ale two and twenty thousand pound yes sir it's cast to penny halfpenny farthing on the back side there you may see it read i will not bait a harrington of the sum i'll win it in my water and my malt my furnaces and hanging of my coppers the tunning and the subtlety of my yest and then the earth of my bottles which i dig turn up and steep and work and kneel myself to a degree of porcelain you will wonder at my proportions what i will put up in seven years for so long time i ask for my invention i will save in cork in my mere stopling above three thousand pound within that term by gouging of them out just to the size of my bottles and not slicing there's infinite loss in that trains draws out another what hast thou there oh making wine of raisins this is in hand now is not that strange sir to make wine of raisins yes and is true a wine as the wines of france or spain or italy look of what grape my raisin is that wine i'll render perfect and of the muscatel grape i'll render muscatel of the canary his the claret his so of all kinds and bait you to the prices of wine throughout the kingdom half in half but how sir if you raise the other commodity raisins 
why then i'll make it out of blackberries and it shall do the same tis but more art and the charge less take out another no good sir save you the trouble i'll not look nor hear of any but your first there the drowned land if it will do as you say sir there's not place to give you demonstration of these things they are a little too subtle but i could show you such a necessity in it as you must be but what you please against the received heresy that england bears no dukes keep you the land sir the greatness of the estate shall throw it upon you if you like better turning it to money what may not you sir purchase with that wealth say you should part with two of your millions to be the thing you would who would not do it as i protest i will out of my dividend lay for some pretty principality in italy from the church now you perhaps fancy the smoke of england rather but have you no private room sir to draw to to enlarge ourselves more upon oh yes devil these sir are businesses asked to be carried with caution and in cloud i apprehend they do sir enter pug devil which way is your mistress above sir in her chamber oh that's well uh, then this way good sir i shall follow you trains give me the bag and go you presently commend my service to my lady tailbush tell her i am come from court this morning say i have got our business moved and well entreat her that she shall give you the fourscore angels and see them disposed of to my counsel sir paul either side some time to-day i'll wait upon her ladyship with the relation exit trains engine aside to fitzdottrell sir of what despatch she is do you mark engine when did you see my cousin everell keeps he still your quarter in the bermudas yes sir he was writing this morning very hard be not you known to him that i am come to town i have effected a business for him but i would have it take him before he thinks for it is it past not yet tis well of the way oh sir your worship takes infinite pains i love friends to be active a sluggish nature puts off man and kind and such a blessing follows it i thank my fate pray you let's be private sir in here where none may interrupt us exeunt meercraft and engine you hear devil lock the street doors fast and let no one in except they be this gentleman's followers to trouble me and you mark you have heard and seen something to-day and by it you may gather your mistress is a fruit that's worth the stealing and therefore worth the watching uh, be you sure now you have all your eyes about you and let in no lace woman nor bought that brings french masks and cutworks see you nor old crones with wafers to convey letters nor no youths disguised like country wives with cream and marrow puddings much knavery may be vented in a pudding much body intelligence they are shrewd ciphers nor turn the key to any neighbour's need be it but to kindle fire or beg a little put it out rather all out to an ash that they may see no smoke or water spill it knock on the empty tubs that by the sound they may be forbid entry say we are robbed if any come to borrow a spoon or so i will not have good fortune or god's blessing let in while i am busy i'll take care sir they shall not trouble you if they would well do so exit <sighs> i have no singular service of this now nor no superlative master i shall wish to be in hell again at leisure bring a vice from thence that had been such a subtlety as to bring broadcloth hither or transport fresh oranges into spain i find it now my chief was in the right can any fiend boast of a better vice than here by nature and art their owners of hell never own me but i am taken the fine tract of it pulls me along 
to hear men such professors grown in our subtlest sciences my first act now shall be to make this master of mine cuckold <laughs> the primitive work of darkness i will practice i will deserve so well of my fair mistress by my discoveries first my counsels after and keeping counsel after that as whosoever is one i will be another sure i'll have my share <laughs> most delicate damned flesh she will be oh that i could stay time now midnight will come too fast upon me i fear to cut my pleasure enter mrs fitzdottrell look at the back door one knocks see who it is pug aside dainty she devil exit i cannot get this venture of the cloak out of my fancy nor the gentleman's way he took which though twas strange yet it was handsome and had a grace withal beyond the newness sure he will think me that dull stupid creature he said and may conclude it if i find not some thought to thank the attempt he did presume by all the carriage of it on my brain for answer and will swear it is very barren if it can yield him no return re-enter pug who is it mistress it is but first let me assure the excellence of mistresses i am although my master's man my mistress's slave the servant of her secrets and sweet turns and know what fitly will conduce to either what's this i pray you come to yourself and think what your part is to make an answer tell who is at the door the gentleman mistress who was at the cloak charge to speak with you this morning who expects only to take some small commandments from you what you please worthy your form he says and gentlest manners oh you'll anon prove his hired man i fear what has he given you for this message sir bid him put off his hopes of straw and leave to spread his nets in view thus though they take master fitzdottrell i am no such foul nor fair one will be had with stalking and wish him to forbear his acting to me at the gentleman's chamber window in lincoln's inn there that opens to my gallery else i swear to acquaint my husband with his folly and leave him to the just rage of his offended jealousy or if your master's sense be not so quick to write me tell him i shall find a friend that will repair me say i will be quiet in mine own house pray you in those words give it to him <laughs> this is some fool turned exit if he be the master now of that state and wit which i allow him sure he will understand me i durst not be more direct for this officious fellow my husband's new groom is a spy upon me i find already yet if he but tell him this in my words he cannot but conceive himself both apprehended and requited i would not have him think he met a statue or spoke to one not there though i were silent re-enter pug how now have you told him yes and what says he says he that which myself would say to you if i durst that you are proud sweet mistress and withal a little ignorant to entertain the good that's proffered and by your beauty's leave not all so wise as some true politic wife would be who having matched with such a nubson i speak it with my master's peace whose face hath left to accuse him now for it doth confess him what you can make him will yet out of scruple and a spiced conscience defraud the poor gentleman at least delay him in the thing he longs for and makes it his whole study how to compass only a title could but he write cuckold he had his ends for look you mrs fitzdottrell aside this can be none but my husband's wit 
my precious mistress mrs fitzdottrell aside it creaks his engine the groom never durst be else so saucy if it were not clearly his worshipful ambition and the top of it the very forked top too why should he keep you thus mured up in a back room mistress allow you never a casement to the street fear of engendering by the eyes with gallons forbid you paper pen and ink like redspain search your half pint of muscatel lest a letter be sunk in the pot and hold your new laid egg against the fire lest any charm be writ there will you make benefit of truth dear mistress if i do tell it you i do it not often i am set over you employed indeed to watch your steps your looks your very breathings and to report them to him now if you will be a true right delicate sweet mistress why we will make a coax of this wise master we will my mistress an absolute fine coax and mock to air all the deep diligences of such a solemn and effectual ass an ass to so good purpose as we'll use him i will contrive it so that you shall go to plays to masks to meetings and to feasts for why is all this rigging and fine tackle mistress if you need handsome vessels of good sail put not forth ever and anon with your nets abroad into the world it is your fishing there you shall choose your friends your servants lady your squires of honour i'll convey your letters fetch answers do you all the offices that can belong to your blood and beauty and for the variety at my times although i am not in due symmetry the man of that proportion or in rule of physic of the just complexion or of that truth of picardil in clothes to boast a sovereignty over ladies yet i know to do my turns sweet mistress come kiss how now dear delicate mistress i am your slave your little worm that loves you your fine monkey your dog your jack your pug that longs to be styled of your pleasures mrs fitzdottrell aloud hear you all this sir pray you come from your standing do a little spare yourself sir from your watch to plot your squire that so well follows your instructions enter fitzdottrell how now sweetheart what is the matter good you are a stranger to the plot you set not your saucy devil here to tempt your wife with all the insolent uncivil language or action he could vent <gasps> did you so devil not you you were not planted in your hole to hear him upon the stairs or here behind the hangings i do not know your qualities he does do it and you not give directions you shall see wife whether he durst or no and what it was i did direct exit sweet mistress are you mad re-enter fitzdottrell with a cudgel you most mere rogue you open manifest villain you fiend apparent you you declared hell-hound good sir good knave good rascal and good traitor now i do find you parcel devil indeed upon the point of trust in your first charge the very day of your probation to tempt your mistress beats pug you do see good wedlock how i directed him why where sir were you nay there is one blow more for exercise strikes him again i told you i should do it would you had done sir O oh, wife, the rarest man. Yet there's another to put you in mind of the last. Beats him again. Such a brave man, wife. Within, he has his projects, 
and as vent them the gallantest were you tentiginous ah would you be acting over the incubus did her silks rustling move you gentle sir out of my sight if thy name were not devil thou shouldst not stay a minute with me in go yet stay yes yet go too and i am resolved what i will do and you shall know it aforehand soon as the gentleman is gone do you hear i'll help your lisping exit pug why such a man wife he has such plots he will make me a duke no less by heaven six mares to your coach wife that's your proportion and your coachman bald because he shall be bare enough do not you laugh we are looking for a place and all in the map what to be of have faith be not an infidel you know i am not easy to be gulled i swear when i have my millions else i'll make another duchess if you have not faith you'll have too much i fear in these false spirits spirits oh no such thing wife wit mere wit this man defies the devil and all his works he does by engine and devices he he has his winged ploughs that go with sails will plough you forty acres at once and mills will spout you water ten miles off all crowland is ours wife and the fens from us in norfolk to the utmost bounds in lincolnshire we have viewed it and measured it with an all by the scale the richest tract of land love in the kingdom there will be made seventeen or eighteen millions or more as may be handled wherefore think sweetheart if thou hast a fancy to one place more than another to be duchess of now name it i will have it but ere it cost it will be had for money either here or in france or italy you have strange fantasies enter meercraft and engine where are you sir i see thou hast no talent this way wife up to thy gallery do chuck leave us to talk of it who understand it exit mrs fitzdotterell i think we have found a place to fit you now sir gloucester oh no i'll none why sir tis fatal that you say right in spencer i think the younger had his last honour thence but he was but earl i know not that sir but thomas of woodstock i'm sure was duke and he was made away at Caris, as duke humphrey was at bury and richard the third you know what end he came to by my faith you are cunning in the chronicle sir no oh, i confess i have it from the playbooks i think they are more authentic that is sure sir meercraft whispers him what say you to this then no a noble house pretends to that i will do no man wrong then take one proposition more and hear it as past exception what is that to be duke of those lands you shall recover take your title then sir duke of the drowned lands or drowned land <laughs> that last is a good sound i like it well the duke of drowned land yes it goes like grown land sir if you mark it ay and drawing thus your honour from the work you make the reputation of that greater and stay at the longer in your name uh, tis true drowned lands will live in drowned land <laughs> yes when you have no foot left as that must be sir one day and though it tarry in your ear some forty fifty descents the longer liver at last yet must thrust them out on if no quirk in law or odd vice of their own not do it first we see those changes daily the fair lands that were the clients are the lawyers now and those rich manors there of goodman tailors had once more wood upon them than the yard by which they were measured out for the last purchase nature hath these vicissitudes she makes no man a state of perpetuity sir you are in the right let's in then and conclude re-enter pug in my sight again i'll talk with you anon Exeunt Fitzdotterel, Meercraft, and Engine. Sure he will geld me if I stay. Or worse, pluck out my tongue. One of the two. This fool, there is no trusting of him. And to quit him were contempt against my chief past pardon. 
it was a shrewd disheartening this at first who would have thought a woman so well harnessed or rather well caparisoned indeed that wears such petticoats and lace to her smocks broad seeming laces as i see them hang there and garters which are lost if she can show them could have done this hell why is she so brave it cannot be to please duke dotterel sure nor the dull pictures in her gallery nor her own dear reflection in her glass yet that may be i have known many of them begin their pleasure but none end it there that i consider as i go along with it they may for want of better company or that they think the better spend an hour two three or four discoursing with their shadow but sure they have a farther speculation no woman dressed with so much care and study doth dress herself in vain i'll vex this problem a little more before i leave it sure exit scene two manley's chambers in lincoln's inn opposite fitzdottrell's house enter Whittipole and manley this was a fortune happy above thought that this should prove thy chamber which i feared would be my greatest trouble this must be the very window and that the room it is i now remember i have often seen there a woman but i never marked her much where was your soul friend faith but now and then awake unto those objects you pretend so let me not live if i am not in love more with her wit for this direction now than with her form though i have praised that prettily since i saw her and you to-day read those gives him the copy of a song they'll go unto the air you love so well try them unto the note may be the music will call her sooner light she's here sing quickly mrs fitzdottrell appears at a window of her house fronting that of manley's chambers either he understood him not or else the fellow was not faithful in delivery of what i bade and i am justly paid that might have made my profit of his service but by mistaking i have drawn on his envy and done the worst defeat upon myself manley sings how music then he may be there and is sure enter pug behind pug aside oh is it so is there the interview have i drawn to you at last my cunning lady the devil is an ass fooled off and beaten nay made an instrument and could not send it well since you have shown the malice of a woman no less than her true wit and learning mistress i'll try if little pug have the malignity to recompense it and so save his danger tis not the pain but the discredit of it the devil should not keep a body entire exit away fall back she comes i leave you sir the master of my chamber i have business exit mistress mrs fitzdottrell advances to the window you make me paint sir they are fair colours lady and natural i did receive some commands from you lately gentle lady but so perplexed and wrapped in the delivery as i may fear to have misinterpreted but must make suit still to be near your grace who is there with you sir none but myself it falls out lady to be a dear friend's lodging wherein there's some conspiracy of fortune with your poor servant's blessed affections who was it sung he lady but he's gone upon my entreaty of him seeing you approach the window neither need you doubt him if he were here he is too much a gentleman sir if you judge me by this simple action 
and by the outward habit and complexion of easiness it has to your design you may with justice say i am a woman and a strange woman but when you shall please to bring but that concurrence of my fortune to memory which to-day yourself did urge it may beget some favour like excuse though none like reason no my tuneful mistress then surely love hath none nor beauty any nor nature violenced in both these with all whose gentle tongues you speak at once i thought i had enough removed already that scruple from your breast and left you all reason when through my morning's perspective i showed you a man so above excuse as he's the cause why any thing is to be done upon him and nothing called an injury misplaced i rather now had hope to show you how love by his excesses grows more natural and what was done this morning with such force was but devised to serve the present then that since love hath the honour to approach thy sister's swelling breasts and touch this soft and rosy hand he hath the skill to draw their nectar forth with kissing and could make more wanton salts from this brave promontory down to this valley than the nimble roe could play the hopping sparrow about these nets and sport squirrel in these crisped grooves bury himself in every silkworm's kell is here unravelled run into the snare which every hair is cast into a curl to catch a cupid flying bathe himself in milk and roses here and dry him there warm his cold hands to play with his smooth round and well-torn chin as with the billiard ball roll on these lips the banks of love and there at once both plant and gather kisses lady shall i with what i have made to-day here call all sense to wonder and all faith to sign the mysteries revealed in your form and will love pardon me the blasphemy i utter when i said a glass could speak this beauty or that fools had power to judge it do but look on her eyes they do light all that love's world compriseth do but look on her hair it is bright as love's star when it riseth do but mark her forehead smoother than words that soothe her and from her arched brow such a grace sheds itself through the face as alone there triumphs to the life all the gain all the good of the element strife have you seen but a bright lily grow before rude hands hath touched it have you marked but the fall of the snow before the soil hath smutched it have you felt the wool of the beaver or swan's down ever or have smelt of the bud of the briar or the nard in the fire or have tasted the bag of the bee oh so white oh so soft oh so sweet is she fitzdotterel appears at his wife's back is she so sir and i will keep her so i know how i can that wit of man will do it i'll go no farther at this window she shall no more be buzzed at take your leave on't if you be sweet meat sweatlock or sweet flesh all's one i do not love this hum about you a fly-blown wife is not so proper in for you you sir look to hear from me so i do sir no but in other terms there's no man offers this to my wife but pays for it that have i sir nay then i'll tell you you are what am i sir why that i'll think on when i have cut your throat go you are an ass i am resolved on't sir i think you are to call you to a reckoning away you broker's block you property liar if you strike me i will strike your mistress strikes mrs fitzdotterel and leads her out oh i could shoot mine eyes at him for that now or leave my teeth in him were they cuckled bane enough to kill him what prodigious blind and most wicked change of fortune's this i have no air of patience all my veins swell and my sinews start at the iniquity of it i shall break break exit scene three another room in fitzdotterel's house enter pug 
this for the malice of it and my revenge may pass ah but now my conscience tells me i have profited the cause of hell but little in the breaking off their loves which if some other act of mine repair not i shall hear ill of in my account enter fitzdottrell and his wife oh but <laughs> could you do this against me and at this time now when i was so employed only for you drowned in my care more than the land i swear i have hoped to win to make you peerless studying for footmen for you fine paced hessians pages to serve you on the knee with one night's wife to bear your train and sit with your four women in council and receive intelligences from foreign parts to dress you at all pieces you've almost turned my good affection to you sound my sweet thoughts my pure purposes i could now find in my very heart to make another lady duchess and depose you well go your ways in exit mrs fitzdottrell devil you have redeemed all i do forgive you and i'll do you good exit pug enter meercraft and engine why have you these excursions where have you been sir where well, i have been vexed a little with a toy oh sir no toys must trouble your grey head now it is growing to be great you must be above all those things nay nay so i will now you are toward the lord you must put off the man sir he says true you must do nothing as you have done it heretofore not know or salute any man that was your bedfellow the other month the other month the week thou dost not know the privileges engine follow that title nor how swift to-day when he has put on his lord's face once then sir for these things i shall do well enough there is no fear of me but then my wife is such an untoward thing she'll never learn how to comport with it i am out of all conceit on her behalf best have her taught sir where are there any schools for ladies is there an academy for women i do know for men there was i learned in it myself to make my legs and do my postures engine whispers to meercraft sir do you remember the conceit you had of the spanish gown at home ha ah, i do thank thee with all my heart dear engine sir there is a certain lady here about the town an english widow who hath lately travelled but she is called the spaniard cause she came latest from thence and keeps the spanish habit such a rare woman all our women here that are of spirit and fashion flock unto her as to their president their law their canon more than they ever did to oracle foreman such rare receipt she has sir for the face such oil such tinctures such pomantums such perfumes medicines quintessences etc and such a mistress of behaviour she knows from the duke's daughter to the doxy what is their due just and no more oh sir you please me in this more than mine own greatness where is she let us have her by your patience we must use means cast how to be acquainted good sir about it we must think how first ah oh, i do not love to tarry for a thing when i have a mind to it you do not know me if you do offer it your wife must send some pretty token to her with a compliment and pray to be received in her good graces all the great ladies do it she shall she shall what were it best to be some little toy i would not have it any great matter sir a diamond ring of forty or fifty pound would do it handsomely and be a gift fit for your wife to send and her to take i'll go and tell my wife on straight exit why this is well the clothes we have now but where's the lady if we could get a witty boy now engine that were an excellent crack i could instruct him to the true height for anything takes the dotterel why sir the best will be one of the players 
No, there's no trusting them. They'll talk of it and tell their poets. What if they do? The jest will brook the stage, but there be some of them are very honest lads. There's Dicky Robinson, a very pretty fellow, and comes often to a gentleman's chamber, a friend of mine. We had the merriest supper of it there one night. The gentleman's landlady invited him to a gossip's feast. Now he, sir, brought Dick Robinson, dressed like a lawyer's wife amongst them all. I lent him clothes. But to see him behave it, and lay the law, and carve, and drink unto them, and then talk body, and send frolics. Oh, it would have burst your buttons, or not left you a seam. They say he's an ingenious youth. Oh, sir, and dresses himself the best beyond forty of your very ladies. Did you never see him? No, I do seldom see those toys, but think you that we may have him? Sir, the young gentleman I tell you of can command him. Shall I attempt it? Yes, do it. Re-enter Fitzdottrell. Slight! I cannot get my wife to part with a ring on any terms, and yet the sullen monkey has two. It were against reason that you should urge it. Sir, send to a goldsmith. Let her not lose by it. How does she lose by it? Is it not for her? Make it your own bounty. It will have the better success. What is a matter of fifty pound to you, sir? I have but a hundred pieces to show here, that I would not break. You shall have credit, sir. I'll send a ticket unto my goldsmith. Enter trains. Here my man comes, too, to carry it fitly. How now, trains? What birds? Your cousin Everill met me, and has beat me, because I would not tell him where you were. I think he has dogged me to the house, too. Well, you shall go out at the back door, then, Trains. You must get guilt hid hither by some means. It is impossible. Tell him we have venison. I'll give him a piece, and send his wife a pheasant. Exit. A forest moves not till that forty pound you had of him last be paid. He keeps more stir for that same petty sum than for your bond of six and statute of eight hundred. Tell him we'll hedge in that. Cry up Fitz Dotrell to him. Double his price. Make him a man of metal. That will not need. His bond is current enough. Exeunt. End of Act Two.